Hi everyone, welcome to Murrily End. Uh, my name is Mark Machado. I'm joined by uh, Estelle Miles, who's Devon and Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka's number one cricket journalist, we've decided that this week. And uh, <laughs> Dominic Machado, uh, my cousin, who joins us from the USA. Uh, before we crack on, I need to remind you of our newsletter. It comes out once a week and we write uh, quite in depth, actually, about various topics in, to do with Shrunken Cricket. This week, Nick Brooks, um, one of the doyens of Shrunken Cricket, has written about the 2014 World Cup win 10 years after it all happened. We were slightly late to the anniversary, but that's okay because we're from Sri Lanka, right? Um, though Nick isn't, uh, but that's a, that, that's a different debate for a different topic, a uh, different show. Uh, today, we are aren't going to talk about Paterano's wickets. We aren't going to talk about where the other Shrunken players have gone in the IPL. We're just dedicating this episode uh, to Charmri Atapatu and her sensational knock against South Africa to level the ODI series. This comes off the back of quite a sensational knock to to win a T20 series. Um, She's been in absolutely blistering form and uh, that that knock was definitely one for the ages. Um, Estelle, I'd love to go to you first to get your thoughts on it. But of course, uh, the game wasn't shown, legally at least, in Sri Lanka. So, Don, you, you can take the floor to, to begin with. You know, we were talking about this before the pod. This was an innings that is hard to put into words. It's hard to even comprehend. It's one of those dream innings where you kind of put the idea out there and you say, oh, maybe Chamre can do something really special here. And you think it's possible. She can do it. She's an incredible player. But to see her do it and to see her do it with the authority and audacity with which she did it, right? I was I was following it and I was closely following runs and balls and I was thinking, okay, you know, run a ball, Tom Ray's just going to play it safe, knock it around, get us over the line. Nope. Fours, sixes, she ends, she punctuates that match with a massive, massive six, a beautiful strike of the ball. She was in control. She let everyone know who the boss was. And, you know, Laura Wolvart put out an all-time great innings in the first innings. Chamri said, you know what? I see that great innings and I'll do you two, three, four times better. Um, it was absolutely brilliant, absolutely stunning. Um, to put in perspective how good it was, so she scored her 195, not out, third highest score in women's ODI cricket, off of 139 balls. Her partners faced 130 balls. They scored 83 runs. She's scoring almost two and a half times the rate that her partner scored. She scored 31 boundaries. Her partners scored seven. That's what you call dominance. 195 and a chase of 301, a number that had never been chased down in the women's game before. Um, And she did it with the help of a really handy knock, I I should say, in as much as we're talking about her partners, uh, uh, Nilakshika played a really great 50, made a really great 50 to support her. But... um, To do it in 44.3 overs is astounding. It was simply brilliant. Um, And it's one that I think I will remember for a long time. And, you know, sort of my reflex as a Sri Lanka cricket fan was like, okay, when is this chase going to go upside down? When is Chamri going to hole out from playing one too many shots? But it didn't happen. It was one of those dream days that you will remember forever. And I'll cede the floor to Estelle now because I'm speechless with how great that innings was. Yeah, it it was an insane innings, right? And like Mark mentioned, of course, it wasn't available on any Sri Lankan TV channels and it wasn't a, available on any streaming platforms. So it was a real struggle to get to actually watch the game. I know I I probably tried about five or six, I won't name the names, um, different websites um, to get the match going and some would stop. I, there was one case midway through our chase where it switched back to the first innings and then it was going from Boulevard's knock so there was a period where I couldn't really find a way to watch it and obviously Twitter came to the rescue someone shared a link and by the way if you do share those links publicly you can get suspended so um, if you're watching this you have to be a bit careful so I mean 
I was sharing that link with whoever I could who was commenting and saying that they couldn't watch because you don't want to miss this knock, right? And I don't mm-hmm. know whether we'll get to see the full replay or even the highlights of it. It was just like, and I, I mentioned this to you guys yesterday and I was talking to Dom about this before the recording as well. Like, I don't think we can still fully comprehend the magnitude of what she did yesterday, right? Because... um 300 has never been chased before. Sri Lanka has crossed 250 in a chase once before. And that that day they made 257. So they haven't even gotten close to 300 in a chase before, right? And the funny thing is, and I'll, I'll read this tweet out, right? It was it was uh, tweeted by Ritvika Dar. And it resonated with me so well. She, she said, the thing is, when I saw the 300 plus run chase, I and many had a hope that Atapattu can chase this down if she gets proper support from the other end. Having such belief in a player while chasing a target that has never been achieved before tells, tells you what a crazily good player she is. And isn't that like absolutely spot on? Because I, I don't know about you guys, maybe you had you felt differently, but even after they scored 300, it wasn't like, you know, I'm going to shut this off and go to sleep because, you know, we're not, go- we are not going to chase 300. And I think that might have been the case maybe three years ago, right? Mm. But you still kind of thought, look, you know, if she gets going, she could chase that down. And scoring 195 out of 300 runs, it's just, it's insane. I, I don't think we can, I, I, I can't put it into, like, I can't be eloquent about it because it was an insane knock. I, I, I think, like, me and Estelle, myself, me and Dom, we, like, we've been talking about Charmory for a long, long time now. Um, you know, at least, what, two, three years, something like that. Um, almost on every time she does something, every time she runs can play or every time she's involved in franchises. And I just kind of think, I've always thought, right, that's as good as she can get. Like, where does she go? You're like, everything, everything that could possibly be thrown at her, she reacts to. She somehow manages to, to kind of grow into and get better at. And every time you think, right, she can't possibly get any better, she gets better, <laughs> right? And you're like... She's, what, in her mid-30s now? Um, this time last week, we were talking about maybe she's about to retire. Uh, may- maybe she's a bit, you know, over overplaying te- international cricket. And then within the next, you know, within a few days, she goes and go, she goes and does this. And you're just like, where does it end? Like, how big does she grow? I mean, I think, I can't remember if it was, uh, if we did this on air, if it was one of her off-air conversations. But um, for those who don't know, Dom is a professor of classical studies in, in North America. And I was saying, Charmory's like a, like a character from, from classical mythology, isn't she? She's like a hero of Athens, something like that. She's like a Hercules, the hero of Sri Lanka. It's like you send your army into battle, and while she's still a rad, while her wicket hasn't fallen, or while she'll still got over the bowl, you kind of feel like you're in it. Like, absolutely anything can happen. And... I've, I've just kind of run out of things to say. I think you could go back and collect up all, all the podcasts and, and various other outlets that I've talked about her from, and just my excitement grows and grows and grows and grows for, for her as, as she grows in character and grows in, in skill. And, and she's like, it's not just having the skill as well, right? It's the mentality to be able to stick about and score those runs. There was one point yesterday when. We, uh, Dom mentioned the group she's done for a double double century and I thought right most cricketers and you know mo- most cricketers have quite an ego on them because um, mainly because of the nature of the way that the game is and how you know you've got to, I think you've got to be a bit selfish at it to be to be good at it particularly batting right um, and there was a point yesterday in that innings where getting a double century wasn't going to be mathematically possible, mm. right? And she, and, and I realised at that moment that she would have been think, you know, most other, and I'm, I'm just going to say, most of the male cricketers would have been thinking about that double century when they'd got to about 175. And she had obviously made that decision that actually she wasn't going to stop running singles. 
because mm. it's the singles that that took the the possibility the mathematical possibility away she was going to do what was right for the team and just keep going like her mentality is just like next level isn't it as an athlete she is super 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 elite and particularly we know like if you're going to be honest in an in a uh, team where she is a giant among you know the, the players around her are very talented but they don't quite have the they're just nowhere near the level she's at and also the setup around her for a lot of the time the shrunken side i know it's 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 improved exponentially the last kind of 18 months or so but for most of it has has been actually quite dreadful and they've not really been mm. very well resourced to create to, to for, the, for all those things to come together to create her is actually quite mm. really really extraordinary yeah um, just to add to what you were saying about the double hundred right there was a point when once the once the rate came down below six and over um where nilakshi was taking strike and she kept telling her look yeah. there's no hurry you don't need to go after the bowling there's no hurry but I, and i remember this clearly when they brought cap back into the attack she said but if it's a ball to hit go after mm. it right so that i think that it it it's it clearly you know it, it shows that she wasn't thinking about that it, obviously mm-hmm. it would have crossed her mind right any human being in that situation would have thought about the double 100 but to for her to tell her partner that like you know there's no hurry but if there's a ball to be hit go after it and i think that's the mentality you're talking mm-hmm. about is that marisan cap is their best bowler right and in that situation when you need less than 6 and over i think they needed about 30 or 40 to win yeah. right there is that temptation to say look let's play her out give her mid over we don't need to worry about her we can go after the other bowler but at that point to tell your partner and to it's also giving her that assurance like even if you go for a big shot and get out i'm still here right that mm-hmm. that player also knows that so that mentality and like you said can you imagine the amount of pressure she's under every single game right you know the match depends on you and we've spoken a lot about the support she's been getting over the last couple mm. of years from a few players in that batting order and that's definitely encouraging but the winning contribution is coming from her 99% of the time right mm. i think uh, last week we discussed that t20 where bishmi gunratna and kavisha dilhari you know won yeah. the game for sri lanka and there wasn't a contribution from atapattu that is like the first game i can think of where that has happened right um so like every game she goes into she's under that pressure and like dom mentioned earlier even in in that situation she was never looking to kind of play singles and you know give her partner the strike and ask her partner to go after the bowling right it's just i also feel it's about putting the opposition also in its place like that six mm. to end the game <laughs> she didn't need to do that she could they could have just yeah. got singles of every delivery right it's also about putting the telling that telling the opposition that look we're not afraid of you it's same thing with with caps mm. over right telling sending that message that we are not afraid of you we are here to compete we are not here to like make up the numbers and that's i think i really hope sri lanka cricket can build on this it would be such a pity if like once she retires things go back to how they were i'm hopeful that it will be better because at least the mental side of things i think she's she and the coach have given a lot to this team mm so we we main job on in sri lanka a lot how big a person how big a character mm. how well known is charmery in in on the island so we were talking about this off air as well as talking to uh, dom about you know things people are saying on social media right um people who don't follow women's cricket or who you know I've seen people the kind of comments people leave on YouTube YouTube live streams when the women are playing. I've been in the media box with people behind the scenes and heard the way they talk about the women's team, about her, about how she plays, about what she looks like, about, you know, her character, whatever. I've heard all of that, right? 
and to now the way like it's all that in spite of all of that that we are seeing the success right this mm-hmm. success so like it's incredible to me how strong she is and talking about like i think anyone who appreciates cricket who is actually a fan of cricket not men's cricket or women's cricket will appreciate how she's done and we are seeing that on social media i was so happy to see like so many people talking about it on twitter tweeting about it you i got so many dms asking for links to watch the match right which was crazy to see and i think couple of episodes ago nick was talking about when he was here in sri lanka how people were talking about the women's team i don't even 5 years ago i don't think that was happening right like i think i i have i i didn't i was not someone who followed the women's game since like the early 2000s or anything i only really started following it once i started working in the industry so to 2015 was it's, the first it's, it's almost it's until about 2011 2012 it was almost yeah. basically impossible mm. to follow it right because it didn't exist it wasn't like yeah. there was no one doing anything right yeah so like once i started i started maybe in 2015 and even then live live streams weren't like common right now ev- nearly every series is live streamed even then i don't think people even knew there was a series going on right and uh, you know you have to admit that a lot of it is people just talking about atapattu but that's bringing thousands and thousands of eyeballs to the game and to the team and among those eyeballs you you will have a few young girls who see that they have something to aspire to be right when they grow up so i think mm-hmm. when we i know we will talk about her legacy and you know her impact and where she stands among the sri lankan greats it's those intangible things i think that bring her into the conversation i was going to say it's, on, on this point her fearlessness is something that's unique i think sri lankans you know we've talked about this culturally are different right they're always going to defer to the better bowler okay well let's play it conservative let's play it slow but the mentality she has is just and mark touched on this is so special she has that ice cold killer mentality um after she smashed the six she wasn't celebrating it was just like look what i did it was she knew what she had done she knew it was a great accomplishment but she wasn't yelling and screaming she just backed herself to do that it reminds me of those athletes like michael jordan or kobe bryant or virat kohli who have that ice in their veins and when the pressure is on they're just at their best and they want to be the best and they have this tenacious drive and i don't think we've ever really seen that in a sri lankan a cricketer at least like I, we'll talk again about her legacy but that killer win the match attitude um uh, is just something i've never seen before and to see it come from a sri lankan woman and to see it as i still said broadcast to everybody that i'm not just going to sit in my place and take the the lot that's given to me but i'm going to make my own fortune i'm going to make my own way is just incredible to see and and really moving and and uh i just remember myself buzzing after the match i had to go off and teach a class and i just felt this high of of like just so excited for the girls so excited for the women so excited for chamri it's just incredible did you tell your students why you were excited did any of them have any interest <laughs> in, in the fortunes say- of sri lankan's uh, women's cricket team You know, I've told them my podcast, but I have not I did not I did not um go into they're they're kind of checked out because they're they're moving towards the end of the year. So, <laughs> I'm sure they would have taken on any any excuse to talk about anything other than what they were supposed to be talking about. So, um, I I like the comparisons to um to was it LeBron and Jordan mm. you compare compare it to. I think she's comparable to Ronaldo and Messi as well, right? Because it like if you look at where both their careers are now Ronaldo's playing in Saudi Arabia Messi's playing in Miami and obviously Messi you know they both have other players in their sides and actually you know uh, some quite very established and, and and great players in both those teams but in both those instances they're kind of the franchise right and Chamri kind of feels like she is the franchise she's the quarterback player she's the uh, she is our champion uh for for our women's side and you know 
uh, Estelle mentioned the the T uh, Twenty game where she didn't perform, yet we still won. And I'm hoping that that's kind of you know her her legacy is she kind of passes down the mentality right because I think you can draw comparisons between her and the kind of Mahela Sanger axis um, that that kind of drove Sri Lankan batting through through the noughties um, and into the 2010s and because th- those two when they were at the crease could be quite ice cold as well and and were there. To, to execute a game plan and that's a lot of what kind of what we saw yesterday right um and i think the great tragedy for when as, a, as sri lanka fans when you look at what happened after those two retired is is that mentality kind of very quickly dropped out of the team right um if this was a different day we could get into a whole conversation about agenda uncles but we won't do that um <laughs> but you know t- teams win because they have the right culture and they have the right psychology behind them, it feels to me like this team, the Sri Lanka women's side, have that right culture, that right mentality. They all seem to, as far as I'm aware, seem to enjoy spending time with each other and um, seem to be learning and growing together. And I just hope, because it's it feels like we're probably closer to the end of her career than we are in the beginning, though I, I still, I, I guess we've still got a few more years left. Um, that the younger girls can kind of, you know, pick pick the torch up off off her when it when it's time for for Charmory to call it a day. Um, if we had breaks, we'd have a break here now, uh, but we don't have enough people watching to insert breaks at the moment. But hopefully, somewhere down the line, we do. What I will do though is remind you to sign up for uh, subscribe to our newsletter. It's free. It comes out every week straight into your email. The link is in the description. If you don't want to like look at the link, just search Murali and or Shmunk Cricket in Substack and you'll find us there. And now that we're back from our so-called break, um, I think what we were planning to do now is compare that knock to other great Sri Lankan knocks. Dom, have you been crunching some figures around yeah. this? Yeah. Um, I have been crunching some figures that I will share in the next section where we think about where she fits in the greats. But I've been thinking a lot about where does this innings rank for me? And, you know, we're comparing across eras or comparing across formats, but I can think of very few innings as impactful as this one. And I think this is a word we're going to come back to with Chamri is just the impact that she has, not just pretty scores, looks good in the scorecard, but match winning, game deciding, knocks, taking everything um, and making it your own, putting your stamp on it. Um, I think first to the KJP knock in South Africa, that's the first comparison. You're thinking of two dashing left-handers who frame their game off of Sanath. And just to shout out, there's a great Twitter interaction between Sanath and Chamri. So go check that out when you you get the chance. And um, I was thinking, this is a better innings. Um, Yes, that's a fourth innings of a test match. Yes, it's a great bowling squad. Yes, it's a 153. But the power that Chamri had throughout the innings was amazing. It seemed like she was just toying with the bowlers. The cuts that she was playing, they just both like the camera couldn't even keep up with how fast the ball was going to the rope. The every time a spinner came on, she's like, okay, I'll milk you for one single. And then at the end of the over, boom, down the track and smashes her for six. Um, I think the fact that she scored 195 out of a 300 chase. I've never seen anything quite like that, Um, that she kept her composure as her partners were falling. We had a a three wicket collapse. uh, Let me tell you exactly how many runs that was for. But basically, after she had that good partnership with Vishmi, um, things kind of fell apart. Yeah, they lost four wickets for 36 runs, yet she still kept her head about her. She still kept fighting and just... Also, the quality of the strokes that she was playing was another thing that was absolutely delightful to watch. It wasn't just brute hitting. It was this beautiful mix between graceful stroke play, aggressive tactics, and then just out and out big hitting. So it was this, it was it was amazing as an innings. Uh, in terms of fortune changing innings, the two that I might bring up as comparison, uh, Dinesh Chandamal's 162 against 
India, I think 2015, where Sri Lanka were really far down and they were able to steal a test match win against India. Uh, the other one is Kusal Mendes' 176 against Australia, where I think they were 30 for four, not very many for a little, and there are 100 runs behind in the test already. And that big innings basically changes the course of that series and they go on to sweep Australia. But um, for impact, for quality, um, for just the the raw, like emotional power of that innings, it's hard for me to find one that ranks above it. Estelle, any any other innings you you compare it to? Yeah, I I don't know how I can compare it to anything else, but I I'd like to echo actually what Dom said about the impact, right? And we have to, and we'll talk talk more about this when we talk about you know where she stands among the greats. But it's it's not only the numbers that we have to look at right it's it's a it's a lot about the intangibles when it comes to Atapattu. it's it's not really about the stats i mean if you look at her numbers they don't really ref, I, they don't reflect how good a player she is right and you know 20 years from now someone from australia is going to say what what Atapattu? like you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's about the intangible things, the things that she's changing about the sport in Sri Lanka, right? That is one big thing that puts this knock ahead of some of the others that Dom mentioned, mm. is that it has that... It's You can change someone's life, right? We, we spoke about Sanat Jayasurya, right? And like it's very... I think it's it's incredible to think... You grew up watching Sana Jayasuri. You grew up in the 90s watching Sana Jayasuri take apart every bowling attack he comes up against. You want to be like him, but there is no sport, there is no cricket for you, right? And then by chance, you start, you get into the system. You come into a system that doesn't really have the resources that are offered to the men, doesn't really have uh, the setup and the structure that the men have. And you somehow get to a place where people are talking about you in the same breath as the man like you idolized when you were a kid, right? Mm. And 20 years from now, your Sri Lanka is going to hit a double hundred. And I'm, I'm not talking just about girls, right? A guy or girls goes a double hundred and says, no, I saw Chamari batting in South Africa and that's what inspired me. Mm. So it's... It is. It's so much more than just 195 runs, right? It, it's so much more than that. Mm. I, I want to compare it to two innings. Uh, the first one I want to compare it to is Aravinda's century in the World Cup final, um, because for me, and I was too small at the time to realise it, but that was such a big moment. Which obviously, like, it's a World Cup final, right? But in terms of Sri Lanka arriving on the world stage, it was like, we're here, we're not just a team who's got test status who turn up and have a laugh. And, you know, you, you can play the kids against, we win stuff, and we're going to do it in our unique Sri Lankan way. And we're not going to, you know, we're, we're going to be, we're, we're going to play a brand of cricket that's totally Sri Lankan and totally unique to us. Um, and for Aravinda, who's our best striker of the ball, uh, or, or actually, I rephrase, I rephrase that, our most orthodox classical player to, to school that. He's the kind of, the 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 prince who was promised almost to school that, I think is, is incredible. Um, and then the other innings I want to compare it to, which is much more contemporary, um, is Dustin Sharnaka's 54 in that T20 in 2022 mm -hmm. against Australia. Because even though it was a, you know, just a, you know, a bilateral series where I, I can't, I don't think rubber. It, was a, it was a dead rubber. Yeah, it, was, it, was, yeah. it was a dead rubber. It just felt like that was an innings mm. that was like, oh gosh, we've had a terrible two years. Like we are back. Mm. <laughs> like we can win. We can win. Uh, the World Cup. You know. And the Asia well, Cup. We, they we, did. We can win. We can, yeah. we can go to win the Asia Cup. We can win yeah. World Cups again. We can compete with the best. Also came at a, a really, just off, I think it came off a really bad time politically yep. and economically for Schlunker as well. Um, and it kind of, this, 
knock of Charmeries has all of those that I've talked about plus more, right? It's a kind of shrug of women's team is, yeah, we're not a flash in the pan. We're not just a team that's going to, we're not T20 mm. bullies. We can play multi-formats if we want. This this innings has got everything. Charmery isn't just someone who's going to uh, bludgeon us over the line. You're not going to catch her out at the boundary. When mm. you play a longer form, she'll bat for longer and she'll, she'll, she'll show her true class as, a, as an orthodox batter in that. Um, and I think, again, it's one of those games where people, all sorts of people on, on in the cricket world have been talking about it on social media. People who I didn't even know, knew mm. anything about Shrunk Women's Cricket have been talking about it. And that's why I think it, it's kind of put us back on the map a bit, hasn't it? Mm. Um, and, and making us, you know, we, we were kind of whispering if things go our way, if the sun is shining at the right time and the numerology <laughs> works out and, you know, food mm. poisoning is in select hotels um, in, in Bangladesh later this year, that maybe Sri Lanka mm. could have an outside chance of it. It won't just be Sri Lanka fans thinking that today. It will be, you know, fans from, from of, of women's cricket from all parts of the mm. world thinking of Charmri's in the mood when she gets to, to Bangladesh. There's a serious risk. Um, that Shrug can cause some serious upsets. Mm-hmm. I dare not say yeah. how far they can go. Well, um, Chamri did say, Chamri said today she's hoping for a semi final berth in both the T20 and the ODI World Cup. So she put, she put the, the number out there. I'll just add one small thing. We've talked about the sort of larger metaphorical, allegorical importance, but it also matters for their qualification for the next World Cup. Yep. This is a huge game for that. They got two crucial points, and now I think they're in seventh, um, and they still have a shot at getting um, a spot in the World Cup without having to qualify. So not only did it matter for all the reasons we just said, but it mattered for the opportunity to play in that World Cup, to not have to go through qualifiers, to become one of those teams that doesn't have to worry about that anymore. Um, where is the next 50 over World Cup, Estelle? India. Is it in a in a India in India? So the gods are looking friendly on us, <laughs> but it's 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 another sign of a mentality, right? To come out months before World Cup and go right, semi finals are bust, right? Semi finals is is the minimum, you know. It, again, that shades off of Mahela and Sanka, right? Setting those high standards, um, the reach reach for the stars and let's hit the moon, right? That's mm. that's the mentality. Off it. It's, uh, I just love her. Yeah. <laughs> the way she said it, I think is amazing. Like, you know, a lot of times Sri Lankans will say things like, oh, yeah, we always do well in World Cups, et cetera, et cetera. But the way she said it, and this is the quote, I want to see my team in the, in the semifinals of the World Cup. I've worked so hard in the last 15 years and I've achieved a few things as a player, but as a captain, I want to do more. I want to see my team in the semifinals of this World Cup. This, that's my wish. Right, that team-oriented mentality. It's just, it's infectious and it's so much, like there's no arrogance to it. It's just mm-hmm. all hard work and um, really putting in the effort. And you can feel that she wants to to elevate this team around her to the highest heights along with her. Um, where does Charmery stand in the pantheon of great Sri Lankan cricketers? Um, and you know, Sh- Shrug has been blessed, probably over blessed, in the last kind of fifty years, I suppose, to have some absolute incredible, to have produced some absolutely incredible cricketers. Where does Charmery fit in in all this? I mean, she's not even retired yet, and if they were to build a kind of Mount Rushmore Sri Lankan cricket. Which, if anyone from Shrunken Tourism is listening, I think is a great idea. I don't know where you'd do it, and I don't want to be involved in the planning because it sounds Ball like face. ecologically it'd be a nightmare. <laughs> uh, but um, do it. And um, I think she's, as it stands right now, I think she's got to be top four. Like, she's in, she's on that. Who are the on, other three? That, yeah. For me, yep. I would pick uh, Murali. Because, it's, well, yeah. I mean, every, everything is morally, right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's morally, def, definitely. I would probably pick uh, Salah Jayasuriya mm-hmm. because I think he's the man that takes cricket to the masses. 
um, in a kind of social way. I think there's like ch- there's lots of crossover between Sadath and, and Charmery as well. The, mm. Not not just in the style of cricket that they play, but I think what they mean for Sri Lanka fans. And I suppose my most controversial pick is that I put Arjuna as well. <laughs> I as, thought you were going to say that. <laughs> no, I, th- I think like I think without without Arjuna, I don't think Sangha. Yeah. yeah, like Sangha is a Arjuna regenerate in like, and I mean that in the, in in the nicest way possible, right? Because I think he, you know, sometimes yeah, he does say stuff that's quite off, and <laughs> I should also say I have no no idea of what's going on in shrunken politics. Yeah. Being kind of very rudimentary, so I don't want to get into that, but. Um, I think Arjuna, Arj- like, if if Arjuna doesn't pull the team off when Murali gets yeah. called for chucking, then almost none of this happens, right? Um, that's that's the, the the turning point beyond getting, you know, after getting test status. That's the next big, biggest thing that happens. I mean, maybe I, in in my top four, I've only picked play, players that I've watched and have have memories mm-hmm. of. And I'm sure you know that there's that there's loads of players that come before them who 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 deserve to be in that in that top four. But what about what about you guys, Estelle? Do you, who would be in your top four? Yeah. So this is a really interesting one, and I kind of thought about it last night um, when when she was batting, right? And I, I you guys would have seen I tweeted about it as well. I still, I don't know where I can place her. Um, just because, like I said, right, it's when you say where does she stand among the Sri Lankan greats, it's not about numbers. Like, I mean, <laughs> Sanat Jayasurya has an average of 32 in ODI cricket, right? Same as Crystal uh, Mendes, right? Same play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, Arjuna's is 35, I think. So, like Dom mentioned, right, you're not talking about Kusal Mendes and Sanat Jasuri in the same breath, right? Yeah. Uh, so, it's so much more than the numbers. So, it's very difficult for me to put put her somewhere. But I would definitely say, I think, you know, you could make a case for what Mark said, right? It has to be top four, um, top four, maybe top five, if you add Aravinda in there as well, just because of the impact again, like you spoke about the 100 in the World Cup final. Again, yes, it's a World Cup final, but it's also a game that puts Sri Lanka there, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you don't win that World Cup, none of what's happened since then happens, right? And same with Arjuna. It's not about how many runs he got, but the leadership he provided in that period of time it's what Sri Lanka needed and in a sense, it's it's that same kind of fearlessness that Atapattu shows, right? Not bowing down to any opposition or telling, you know, not telling, not conveying to them that, look, we respect you, we want to like play you down. None of that, right? So, I, I mean, it's a, I know it's a boring answer. It's not a scandalous one, but like, I find it difficult to, you know, give her a spot, but certainly she has to be, amongst the greatest cricketers produced by Sri Lanka, one of the greatest sports people ever produced by Sri Lanka, um, simply because of that impact. And I, I would, you know, 20 years from now, if I'm a, if we are alive, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see how she is spoken mm-hmm. about, right? Because there's going to be a really, really important period of time, I think, in the next couple of years, once she's retired, where does that team go? And if this is what makes Sri Lanka into that, you know, like 1996 did for the men's team, if this is what makes us one of the teams to watch out in women's cricket, then, I mean, it's it has to be credited to her, right? Because she's she's getting people to watch this uh, again i have to say like just think just think about it what looking at social media over the last 24 hours right 
people who don't really even follow the women's team that much are talking about her in the same breath of an Aravind De Silva and a Sana Jayasuri and a Murali and a Arjuna, right? It's it's so hard for me to imagine because every time you'd see it'd be like, oh, she she only scores inconsistently. Oh, only she scores. Nobody else scores in that team. There's no point following them. No point mm-hmm. paying them. No point watching them. You know all those comments. And now people are talking about her in that same breath as people who we've idolized over, you know, the last 25 years, right? So, yeah, I mean, sorry, long ramble without a like a definitive answer, but um, I think her impact is really huge. And that legacy, I hope, is going to live long. I, you know, so. I was going to say, um, I kind of am... I'm, I'm a little bit, I, I don't know, I, I'll give my Mount Rushmore at the end, but what <laughs> I want to say that I realized is um, Estelle says the numbers don't tell the full story, but I think they tell part of the story. And I think the story is that how impactful is Chamri for this team? Looking at Sri Lanka's women's ODI stats, the impact can only be compared to one person in one format, and that is Murali bowling in test cricket. Um, To put it in perspective, no other woman has scored 100 in Sri Lanka women's ODI cricket. She scored nine. She has the top 11 scores of all time. No one else has scored above an 88, so she scored double that and more. Um, She has 25 50-plus scores. No one else has more than seven. And Um, also, by the way... How many ODIs? Hundred ODIs. Hundred, about a hundred, about a hundred. Twenty-five is, yeah. plus, fifty plus scores is incredible. Yeah, and she has nine hundreds. That's third all time in women's ODIs, right? That that's amazing. All teams, not not even including Sri Lanka. Um, she has scored more runs than the second and third place run scorer in Sri Lankan women's cr- cricket combined. She has fifty-four sixes. No one else has hit more than thirteen. Um, she has scored, and then over the last 10 years, since they've been doing this women's championship, she scored 700s and 750s. The rest of the team has scored 950s. So she's had 14 50 plus scores. The rest of the team has nine. She has scored more than triple the runs of the next leading scorer. And her strike rate is one and a half times that. These stats do not make any sense. Like they are like when you look at Murley's bowling stats, they make no sense. They look completely out of context. They're completely bizarro. And then I think to Estelle's point, sometimes when you look at the full picture, it's like 80 strike rate, 36 um, average, not so great. But over the last two and a half years in the qualification period, she is the second highest run scorer. She averages 68. She's hit 400s. Her strike rate is 107 which we don't have a men's cricketer right now who can do that consistently. Um, It's amazing how much she has stamped ODIs as her format. And even though the numbers, then that tells you how good she is. The numbers don't do her justice, but at the same time, they tell you the story of this outsized impact. That's incredible to see. She was women's ODI cricketer of the year last year, right? The best in the entire world. I think, you know, for me, when I think of her, I think of, I, I want to think of her ODI impact as as great as Morley's test impact. Um, and when you throw on that she's captain and she's seen this side win victories against, or, or square series against South Africa, right, to defeat New Zealand. That's incredible. It's Morley with shades of Arjuna there. Um, and when I think... You step back and you think that plus her T20 exploits, I think it's very hard to keep her off that Mount Rushmore. I think she's there with Morley. I think she's there with Arjuna. And then, you know, this is so tough. The fourth one is really tough. Um, I go with Sangha because I think he becomes the, he's sort of, you can't include, you can't, you can't not, you can't exclude our greatest batter of all time, right? Our, our most, but maybe not greatest, accomplished batter of all time, right? He kind of um, takes the glory that Arjuna and Sanath pass on to him and he makes it stick, 
right? He's the president of the MCC. He delivers the Colin Cowdery lecture. He becomes like sort of regularized. Um, but I understand that's controversial and I can totally see putting Sanath or Arav in the no, in I there. Think, yeah. If you if you take cricket as a whole, like Sri Lankan cricket as a whole, yeah, I think Sangha is up there. You can't you can't you can't argue with the numbers he has in Test cricket, yeah. right? But I think I was thinking about ODI cricket. In ODI cricket, I wouldn't yeah. have him up there. No, I wouldn't put him anywhere near that. You know <laughs> that top that top. Oh. I, I, I think you can, there's a good argument for Sanga. I think there's a good argument for Mahela. I think in 10 years' time, the person who will be, like, knocking that... The, Uh-oh. One of the faces for down will be... No, I think, <laughs> I think it'll be Lassus Malenga, right? Because yeah. I think we'll get this whole crutch, like, whole group of, of slingers mm. coming through. And, you know, look at, look at what's happening in the IPL, right? All and also... Can I just say about Lasit Malinga, right? He's the one who convinced her not to retire. Yeah. Like two years ago. Yeah. And you know what? Like, I will say Lasit Malinga for long periods of his career was seen as a big douchebag in Sri Lanka, right? Just because of his media interactions and stuff like that. But looking at, like, I've been doing some research on Matisha Patirana, on Nuan Tushar, obviously spoke mm. to Chamir, Chamari. All of them talk about how how much he's helped them and how he's kind of, you know, guys like Matisha and Nuantushara, how he's kind of, he's gone to them and said, look, let's work on something. Let's work together. Let's like do something for Sri Lanka. And that's another, like the things that we don't see and are not reflected in numbers that mm. make players like we get into that conversation of like greatest of all time, right? Like, mm -hmm the impact they can have on other players and on the game as a whole is just immense. Yeah. I think the one person we should throw out there too is Mahela. I think influence wise, right? If, you know, obviously great statistical records, but in terms of coaching, setting up infrastructure, his influence on the national teams, I think that and his captaincy, I think are significant. Um, I think you're right. Malinga, to me, Malinga's on my, if we're talking about, best limited over Sri Lankan players. He's on my top four list. He is the you know greatest limited over bowler we've ever produced. Um, and I think the impact is interesting, like the, the sort of person to person handing down of knowledge that Estelle talked about that sort of, OK, come on, let's let's help you to get to that next step. And you see it in his tweets, right? He's always mm -hmm. talking about players, talking about what they can do, what they can do better. It He has a remarkably positive helpful attitude compared to, as Estelle said, right, this negative portrayal that he's given as kind of, you know, party boy, playboy, all that stuff, you know, and part of that is just his appearance, his irregularity. It's not, um, Sri Lankans don't tend to like that. Even the shellfish restaurant that he plugs on, in on Instagram, I don't know um, <laughs> if he owns it or not, but that seems to be like a quite cheap one. Compared to other players <laughs> who we've talked about in discussions, shellfish. To, to, to whatever could you be referring, Mark? Yeah, you know, I've kept it cryptic because you know I, I I look forward to the ministry of Brown's from next him. residency sponsorship of this podcast and next residency in London or Melbourne or wherever city I happen to be in. I will be happily in attendance, even if I have to remortgage my house to be there. Yeah. Uh, um, where uh, that, that prawn place that uh, Malinka's involved with seems like quite affordable <laughs> and reasonably priced from what I can see. He's a real man of the people, isn't he? Mm. I also love, there's two things that haven't been mentioned about Lassie Malinka that I need to mention. Firstly, I love his YouTube channel mm. where he talks, mm. he talks about a variety of things. The two specific bits I do love about it is what he does is pre, whenever Sri Lanka play a big game, he'll often do a like a preview of it, a big series. Yeah. And he talks about how he would bowl to all their, to the opposition batters. Um, and it makes perfect sense when you watch it because he only ever goes, just bowl wide Yorkers to this person. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, yeah, th that's a great strategy, but we don't have the players who could do that right now. <laughs> and all, but the thing I love even more than him talking about cricket on his YouTube page is when he talks about his fish. That man loves his cart, man. And I, I've got a lot of respect for that. Um, and what all I aspire to is to live in Sunderland with a big cart pond 
at some point. <laughs> like Malinka is 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 a kind of lifestyle for me. For shrunken men like me, he's a lifestyle guru as well, guide. Um, so yeah, and I I do think as I, as I said earlier, I do think the way T Twenty cricket's going, his influence um, on the game actually weirdly <laughs> is getting. It's getting larger because it's taken us this, or it's taken not just us, the world this long to kind of see the 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 Malinga regens. Even though it feels like it's what five or six years since he last bowled yeah. and he yeah. and he made his debut what two thousand and five, two thousand and six, mm-hmm. I think. So he's been around a while, but it's taken this long for the for the rest of the cricket world to kind of catch up with him, and it's it's quite extraordinary the impact he he can he, he's now having on the game. I'm trying to think of other people that there must be people like pre Arjuna yeah. who who need to you know Sathya Sivan yeah. he's somebody when I was a kid people were like I oh, know he's the best player drunk has ever had yeah. drunk will never have a better player than that even though there's almost I don't think there's any footage of him playing um, and he never don't played forget that double yet. century he scored in in India you know you can't forget yeah. that <laughs> Exa- exactly right. right so you know the, these are this is pure Sri Lankan cricket heritage, isn't it? So, Mm -hmm. um, and and these are every generation in Sri Lankan cricket, by and large, you can maybe have an argument about what's happened in the last 10 years, but by and large, it's kind of moved the game on Mm -hmm. another another bit and moved moved cricket in the island on another bit. But what about those, the original guys, right? We we didn't get test status because our name got drawn yeah. out for hat somewhere, but because we had a good enough team for it, mm. um, all the people involved in that need to be recognised as well. Um, so m- maybe we'll just use our recency bias. I'd love, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, like get in touch with us and tell us who your Mount Rushmore would be because um, I think there's there's loads of other players you, can, you could make a, you might you might put Dav Watmore on it, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, there's loads of other people involved in Shrek Cricket who I think are worth um, consideration for this this debate, and um, hopefully one day uh, Sri Lanka Tourism and Sri Lanka Cricket will will team up and get us a, a, a actual giant Mount Rushmore built somewhere on on the island with with these faces carved into rock. I'd love that, uh, guys. Should we leave it there? Um, we'll be back next week. Uh, hopefully, something extraordinary happens um, between now and then. I'm not quite sure what it is. Maybe some of our players start getting games at the IPL. Uh, uh, if not, we'll, we'll find something else to chat about. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the newsletter um, and hit the subscribe button or the follow button and tell your other friends about us. Thanks for, for joining us. Bye.